Good morning, everybody. Are you guys ready for Candy Cane Lane pillow? I am loving this pillow, and I just wanna share with you all my secrets of how to make this pillow. Um, we'll talk about organization. I will help you with um, how to cut, and, and then how to make it go. Hi, Gloria. Um, so as we go through this process, um, today we're just going to cut and also show you organization. And then next week we'll do a couple of blocks and then the week after we'll do a couple more and then I'll show you how to do the borders and how to quilt ahead of time. We're gonna be quilting, hi Jeannie. Um, we'll be quilting it before you um, do the appliques and all of that kind of stuff. I prefer that view. Good morning everybody, Rosalie. Good morning, Joanne. Um, so as we do this, we were going to be quilting it first and then going ahead and doing it. And there's some, a couple of little corrections that I have that I feel like, hi Betty, that they made a mistake. And so I kind of want to help you along with that. Um, hi Mary Jane. I'm hoping that everybody has printed out your instructions. You got this wonderful CD and let me, I'm going to change my camera. Okay. So you got the CD, and on the CD is all your files for the, um, they've got SVG files, they've got the embroidery files, and they've got all the instructions. So what you want to do is you want to print out your instructions. And I've done that, and the way that I keep organized, when they print the instructions out, they actually have you um, get uh, plastic bags and you put the everything in the plastic bags and you mark the plastic bags and things like that. Well the way that I organize and I come from a background of I was I was a middle school secretary for 30 some years and so you kind of learn how to get organized because you have so many interruptions with kids, parents, teachers, principal, all that kind of thing. So you've got to get yourself so that you have everything in one place. So I have a notebook that I printed out the um, front panel so that I know that this is the Kimberbell Candy Cane um, Lane Pillow. And then I get dividers. I also have um, page protectors and I put every all my instructions in a page protector. Most of the time I print it out, if I remember, two-sided. Um, this time I did forget to hit that one button on my printer. So I used a little more paper than I would like. But, um, so I use the page protectors and put each one in. And then in your instructions on page, I want to find it for you. Um, doo -doo -doo, where is it? Here it is, on page two. Okay, as we look over here to page two, here's where they tell you to make your um, uh, baggies and you put the names of each block on there. I chose not to do that because I lose a baggie and then I'm sunk. Whereas all in one book with the page protectors, it works so much better. When you have, um, oh Gloria, that's awesome. <laughs> it's the best job ever to work with those kids. Um, anyway, so what you want to do is there's block names. So you have all your block names on it. So I have bought these little, um, they're like stickies. They come off, but they also just slide right on. And then I use, hopefully you can see that, a labeler. And I've labeled it to make all of those blocks for each of the number, or names on the block, the block names which are right here, um, each section, so that I have a section for each block on, with your candy cane lane. And I'll do this with, my, with the quilts as well, um, because uh, it just seems to work out so much better. So between each one, I have the instructions, and then I will have one extra envelope, and that's where I put all my pieces. So um, let's see where I have them here. So you can see I have all my cut pieces in a, just a plain page protector that is behind my little um, my instructions. So that I've got everything in one place. If I was doing the quilts, which you um, which you know like Candy Corn Lane, and we've got a new one coming up, we'll talk about that too. Um, 
I will have sections because you put it together in sections. Hi, Fancy Pants. Um, and so when you put this, I put section one, two, three, four. So when I finish it, I will put the finished block in what section I'm going to be putting. So um, it works out really nicely that way. So first thing I do is, that is make my notebook and I put all of my pages in and then I leave one uh, page in the back to put my either unfinished or finished product for the pillows. If I were doing the quilt, I would make the sections. One, two, three, I think in the candy corn quilt, it's six sections, so I had six sections. So when I finished it, I put it, the finished block in the section where it's going to go. So that kind of gives you an overview of how I do my book. How do I keep it all in one place and make it very simple and easy and organized and ready to go? So the first thing you're gonna do is print out your, all your um, instructions. And they have two pages that you'll be using at first. One is the fabric requirements. These are all the, um, the fabrics that you have and what they are. And then there's another page in here, which is your fabric cutting design. Um, oh, awesome. Oh, they're closing, that's not good. But uh, awesome on the notebooks. I buy the inch and a half notebooks. That seems to work for both the quilts and also the bench pillows. Um, I did um, Boo, um, Boulevard, and I have one notebook for that. You can always go and change these then. If I, that's why I put the labels on them. <laughs> yes, Dora, somebody did that for you. Um, anyway, so what you want to do is, um, this is where you're going to be looking on the fabric cutting diagrams. It's on page five. It gives you all the different fabrics that you need, and it also gives you embellishment kit cutting diagrams. And I'm going to ask you, please don't do the embellishment cutting. And the only reason I say that, to me, there's a lot of waste. And I will um, use it sparingly and use the whole piece and just put it down. And I'll show you how when we sew it out. We're going to do a sew out next week of how I use the embellishment kit. Um, but I don't cut it. If you want to, you can. But there's so much waste that I feel like it's much better if you don't uh, cut. And I have used um, the candy corn quilt. I have done two of them, and I've only used one embellishment kit so far. Now, there are a couple things I'll be using out of it, but then I have them left over for other, other fun pillows or mini pillows or you know all sorts of fun stuff. If you um, take any of these designs, I was thinking, and I, again, I'm dressed as fall because we've got fall going on, but I want to make a t-shirt using the little house and the candy cane and put it on a t-shirt. And I then will have leftover, once I'm done with my pillow, I'll have leftover um, embellishments to do that. So I, I, I recommend you not cutting your embellishment stuff, but we are going to cut our fabrics today. So that's kind of one of the things. And um, I, I uh, do you fold quilt squares to fit the protector? Sometimes I do, and I did on this one, but I don't like, um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. What I do do, and let me go to one, you can see I do have it folded in here. It's the eight and a half by ten and a half piece. I will unfold it when I put on um, the uh, backing, and I'll talk about the different backings that you can use, because I will back every single one of my fabrics in my on, my, um, on these blocks. So um, as we go through this, I'll explain all of that. So um, once you get the, you're going to go to page five, and I always like to cut the biggest pieces first, kind of get them out of the way. And, um, and I wanted to show you how I cut them. It's, um, there are several different, three different rulers that I use in cutting my bench pillows. And um, once you uh, cut it, then I put it where it belongs. And we'll kind of go over that. So I have taken my fabrics that are in your kit, and I have put them, um, I have already spray starched them. And I use Best Press. I will spray starch it, what I call the six time rule. Good morning, Lynn. Um, 
what I end up doing with it is I spray my fabric, I will turn it over and I will press my fabric. And then I will um, spray it again, turn it over and press it again. And it sounds really silly to do that, but it comes out very, very nice and stiff and with the best press. You can use Terial Magic, but I'm finding with that, when you're stabilizing it all, it's a little too stiff. And um, I want a little bit of softness to my fabric. So best press works for me, but I do do it um, three times on each side and to get it um, so that, and it smells good because I use the lavender and um, I'm good to go. We do have best press here, so in different, in different flavors. Um, I use the linen fresh for my husband when I iron for him, which isn't often, and, <laughs> and I use the lavender for myself. So you have in there a, uh, like a aqua green. These colors are so yummy. Um, this is used for the two lines, and I'm going to try and get this into the camera. So these two lines right here. We are going to quilt those, believe it or not. We're also going to quilt the borders, okay? Um, as and when, before we start working on them. So I'm going to go ahead and want to cut the, the bigger piece first. So I'm going to move this out of the way. I want to talk to you about my rulers. Um, I used to use just the six inch by 24 inch ruler all the time and it is the best one and I still use it. Um, it works out great. I have a good time with it. Um, it's one of my favorite rulers, but I discovered, yes, they are. <laughs> uh, Doris, very good. Um, so we have this nice big half yard piece of fabric that I've pressed. And um, if you know, excuse me, if you notice in this, um, the cutout, and hopefully you can see that okay. You have a six and a half by ten and a half inch at the very top. And then going this way, it's eight and a half inches. And then this way again, it's eight and a half inches. But this one's kind of blocking the way because I can't cut this all the way down eight and a half inches. So the first thing I'm going to cut off is this six and a half by ten and a half inch block. So I want to get that over with first. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, with this and uh, first thing I do is I cut my selvage off on the, I do it on the one side first so I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully you can see this it looks like it's good and the other favorite ruler that I use which is I didn't think I was gonna use it someone told me about it I said oh I'll, I'll get one but I'm not real crazy okay I absolutely love this ruler and I use it all the time it's an eight and a half inch by 24 and a half inch ruler. It, um, and Kimberbell's blocks are all eight and a half, most of them by 10 and a half or six and a half by 10 and a half. So um, the eight and a half ruler just works really, really well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off my selvage and maybe make sure that it's straight here. And I'm a righty a righty person and so I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I'm just going to cut the selvage off. I wish I was like, um, what's her face from Quilt in the Day where you just kind of toss it behind you. <laughs> but so the next thing I'm going to do is find my six and a half because remember that the instructions had it's a six and a half and it goes um, across the 18 inch way of the fabric. So hopefully you can see this. I think I better move it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna cut six and a half inches off first. Okay. And then I like to square off the other side. So I'm gonna just put this on the mat here and Oops, make sure it's straight. Go ahead and cut that. 
And then I needed 10 and a half inches. So obviously my eight and a half inch ruler, and I'm gonna straighten it on there. And if I put the eight and a half inch on, it is very easy to cut my 10 and a half inch piece. So here's my 10 and a half inch. This is spare. I'm just gonna put that to the side and I've got my first piece done. Now, here is the kicker on this. So I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to fold this back up to my um, half a yard piece by width of the fabric, right? And I'm gonna fold it one more time and I'm gonna straighten that one edge because I didn't, haven't done that yet. And I gotta stand up to do this. Get my book out of the way. Thank you. Go ahead and square it off. And now, again, my eight and a half inch, remember I have to go eight and a half inches twice. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on there. I'm gonna cut my eight and a half like that. I'm gonna bring it over so you can see it. And I'm gonna cut my eight and a half inch again. So now I've just made my two major cuts, just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut the salvage off on the one side again. Okay. And then I know that in the one strip, I'm supposed to have three 10 and a half inch pieces. So obviously I could put the two together I'm going to move it here so I can, hopefully you can see me. I'm going to go to, again, because this is eight and a half inches, there's two more. That's done. And then I need to have one more out of this strip. Okay. I have left over here, and there's my third eight and a half. Now, out of the next strip, I'm going to cut off my selvage, And I'm going to put the two edges together again because I can. I need two eight and a half by ten and a half out of this long piece. Got my two more, and now my last one is going to be ten and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my ten and a half inches. Make sure I've got that there. But this one is, the last one here is six and a half inches. So I'm going to turn this. And because I have my half inch here, I just need to find my six and a half inch here. So now I have two, I'm going to clean this off a little bit. I have my two pieces that are six and a half by ten and a half, and then I have my five pieces that are the um, eight and a half by ten and a half. That's how fast that goes with that eight and a half by twenty-four and a half. Yes, Joanne, I'm, you missed a little bit. I did press mine, and I use Best Press on all of them before I cut. I never cut out any fabric without um, pr 
pressing it with uh, starch first. And I love best press. It doesn't give it real thick, but it gives a nice finish and it always smells good afterwards. You can get the non-smell one as well if you want to. But I always do the press. Now, I, I live a little while away, so it kind of got um, bent a little bit, but it's it, it should be fine. Now, one of the things that I do with this, I will take it back to my um, ironing board and I will press it. But I use my, um, shoot, what do I do with it? Um, the woven. Um, <laughs> OESD. I literally, you, you can use Shape Flex or you can use Fusible Woven. And I love the way the Fusible Woven looks. Um, and I actually have discovered Fusible Woven and I absolutely adore it. And you can see what I do is I back all my fabrics with the Fusible Woven. It's an OESD product. It's stiffer than, um, I think a little bit stiffer than your Shape Flex. And I discovered it, um, I heard it on one of the shows or someplace. So what I will do with this, and it's kind of cool, is I will take my blocks that I've just cut, and hopefully you can see this. And you can use Shape Flex. I'm not saying anything about that, but I don't know what it is about the fusible woven that it doesn't shrink when you use steam on it. It keeps it exactly the same. So with this one piece, I just cut uh, 10 and a half inches. And then I will take it this way. And again, because of my wonderful ruler that I have, I have the, um, oops, I want to make sure I don't cut my fabric here, it's a little crooked. So out of this one piece, I have the backing for one of my eight and a half inch squares, and I also have the backing for the six and a half inch square by ten and a half. So I just use that and cut it that way. So I will have two more. And then you will have leftovers on the, the last um, three blocks. And I use that for all the little pieces um, with it. And so you can see, I keep all of my little pieces because this little piece here is going to be perfect for one of the doors on the houses. So I will, will back it with that. And um, the, the roof, I will back that fabric. So I keep all my little pieces of mine and I just kind of lay it inside and roll it up like that. And I, I always use all the uh, little pieces of the, um, of the uh, woven, fusible woven. It is a really nice product. Um, Salima has it here. It comes in several different sizes. This is, I believe, the 15 inch size of it. Um, I probably use this the most. They have a 10 inch size and I believe they have a 20 inch size of it as well. But the 15 seems to work with everything that I'm doing. And um, so I like that to back up all my, back my, all my fabrics. Um, there are gonna be a couple more things that you're going to um, use. And um, Salim has got them on her website already, which is pretty, pretty cool. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Has the picture frozen? Oh boy, let's see. I, am I frozen or is it still okay? Hopefully you can see me. I'm gonna take you back to me and then we can see. Does anybody else have a frozen picture? I hope not. No? Okay, we're good to go then. Um, then I'm going to take it back to the table. Um, this is a new product that's been out for a while, but it's called, it's an OASD, it's a hole or a, a puncher. And you will be making holes in this for lights. And I absolutely love this puncher. And what's really cool about it, if I can get it undone here, you have in the top of this different sizes. 
So if you have bigger holes, smaller holes, or the one that's on the one I have right now. So I use this on a lot of different things, you know, making eyelets and things like that. But I love the idea that all of that is um, stored inside and then also that you can use it. But you will be using this for this um, uh, project as well. The other thing that OESDs come out with, and I like to stay organized, is these little containers. And this is perfect because we use 10 different colors, except for I use black and white um, are the two, and I buy the big spools of those. But I absolutely love these. These are my go-to. I put all my colors in when I have a project and leave it by my machine. They, they stack so you can use put two at once. You can put another one on top. So you can actually do, they sell them in sets of two for 20, um, for 20 spools. But for most of the boo um, candy corn quilt and all of that, you only use 10 colors. So it really works out nicely so that you've got all of these. Um, as well. So I just kind of want to, you know, I'm, like I said, I like to stay organized with all of my goodies there. Um, so that's that. The embellishment kit that you purchased with it has buttons in it. It's got your lights. It's also got, and I want you to see, and I don't know if I can do it through here. Okay. I don't know if you notice, there's some snow on the bottom, okay? That goes in after you have embroidered everything. You have that piece. Um, yes, Doris Salima does sell the thread kit with the uh, thread kit container. Yes, she does. And they are $27.99 and it's a set of two, okay? The OESD Puncher is $19.99, and she also sells that. I'll put the link on the website. And she'll put the link up on the website. Um, the other thing in here is this white snow, which is really cool. It's all in one strip. So after we sew it all together, you're going to be putting the snow down. Um, I was wondering where the snow was in the pieces, but they made it nice so it's all one piece, so there's no seams in it when you put that down. So we'll talk about that when it gets to be the time for that. Um, I'm trying to think what else there is. Oh, so I also cut, and I think in their instructions, um, and you have enough fabric to do this. This is going to be one and a half inches. This is the border that goes in between the, mini, uh, the inner border. Okay, we will do, we will be embroidering this whole piece. Okay, but I'm going to do it in two pieces. So I believe it says to cut it an inch and a half. So again, I like to get the bigger pieces out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and fold it up. And here's where I'm going to use my smaller ruler for the rest of the stuff to cut. And once again, I have to stand up to do this. So, cut that away. And then I'm going to use my inch and a half side and go ahead and cut an inch and a half for one side of the border. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut the other half of the border. Okay, so I have some leftover. And now I've got my two borders cut out. Just like that. So, in my book. I have, you can see street lamp, one, cocoa stand, Red House, Christmas Tree, Tan House, Street Lab 2. And then I have Patchwork Border. And so with the Patchwork Border, you're going to be cutting out a bunch of the pieces. And we'll go over that too. I put those in an envelope or in, in a protector, all ready to go. And I put my borders in as well. So they're all set. 
Um, I have a pillow back, so when I cut my pillow back, I will put it in here. The fairy lights, they tell you how to do that. And then there's templates. We don't need this because if you bought the embellishment kit, you already have it done. You don't have to worry about that at all, okay? So let's cut some of the pieces out. And I'm going to go back to, again, I love the way they've done this. So this first one is a plain red, okay? I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to find my plain red, and I kind of pull all my reds out. Let me get them here. And of course, I put them in order already. That was kind of... So I've got the red. So it shows me that I'm first thing I'm going to cut is a three and a half inch piece. So when you're looking at this, your fabric is the way it shows you. So it's kind of the longer length is going up. I'm going to cut off a three and a half inch strip all the way across. And then the next one, I'm going to cut a four inch strip. I'd cut the biggest, the widest one. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut a three and a half inch. So let's cut that. First, I want to square off my, um, my side, and it's always a good idea to do that. They, are, they do give you enough fabric. There are times when they're a little skimpy, but uh, there's enough to square it off. You have to open your blade if you're going to cut. Okay, so there's my squared off edge, and the first cut that I'm going to make is three and a half inches. So I'm going to find my three and a half inch. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. And then my next one is going to be four inches. So I literally turn around my um, ruler so it's easy on me. And there's one, two, three, four. So I'm going to cut four inches. Okay. And then that last one is four inches by five inches. So again, I'm going to square off this side. And then I'm going to cut it five inches. So I'm using that same edge. Okay. So there's my one five inch piece. And then the next one is three and a half by four and a half. So this way, I'm going to cut my. Um, four and a half, so I'm going to turn it around. I just like to keep using the ruler as it's meant to be instead of figuring it out. And that's why I love this um, eight and a half width. Okay, so this is four and a half, but now I need to make it three and a half. So I'm going to turn it. And find my three and a half. Oops, sorry, I need to scoot. Scoot up so you can see me. Over. <laughs> okay, you good? And so there's my those two pieces. And now the last two are the very first ones in that row are four and a half. So I'm going to go to my four and a half width. And I need to move you up. And I, I need like another one. Use the ruler as yes. the guide versus the mat. The mat, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like the half inch on mm -hmm. each side or the inch. So now I have these two, and the, these. And so I've got four cuts. So now I'm going to take my book back over, and I'm going to go back over to the page number three, and in here. It says the first is a four by five, so that was a kind of the first one that I cut. Okay, and that's going to the red house. So now I'm going to go to my red house, tan house, blue house, red house, and I'm going to put that in here, and that's for the house. Okay, then the next one. 
for this is the roof and the chimney of four and a half by three and a half. And let's see, those are both the same. So this is my three and a half, yes. That one's going to the tan house. So I'm gonna find my tan house and put it in with my tan house, okay? Then these two pieces, and it does say here patchwork border, four and three quarters by four and a half. So now I'm going to put those under my patchwork border and I'll put them in here, okay? That's how you cut. So then I'm gonna to go to the next one. Now the next one I wanted to show you, and where is it? Some of these say up here, directional print. Extremely important. Let me see if I take that out for you. Is it? There we go. Directional print. So I gotta make sure that that's going the right way. And I think that's the only one in this one. So my directional print shows here that my lines are going across this way. So once again, and these are gonna be, I think, they are going to be my border. And this one is really cattywampus. Okay, so this one is going, again, I'm cutting the three and a half, because that's what it says here. Three and a half is going this way. So I'm gonna put my ruler on the three and a half. Okay, and then I cheat. So I will take the selvage off of here. Actually, I should have done that at the same time. But then this one, I will cut both of them at the same time. And then this much is extra. And this is ready to go into my patchwork. And then again, I go back to, let me put this back in. So the two pages that you're gonna be using the most are the fabric requirements list. And you can see this goes to the patchwork border. So that's actually gonna go back. So that's how I keep organized in this. And um, patchwork border, where are you? There you go. So that's ready to go. So. I'm hoping, I don't, thought, I don't want you to sit here and watch me cut every single piece, but that's kind of how I go about it. So I will just go one at a time through each and every one of these. But there's one thing I want to caution you about. There is an extra piece of brown fabric. Let me get it out for you. Okay, so it's this one right here. And on it, it says, you can cut a three and a half by three inch piece, a four by two, and a three by two. But optional cuts is, is to replace the cork. So if you don't want to use the cork that's in your embellishment kit, then you would cut these. So all you truly need out of this piece is a three by three and a half. So when I go back to here where it says the brown, the stand is a three and a half by three inch. That's the cocoa stand, okay? The other pieces are gonna be the cork. And so if you look at this, and I wanted to show you this, you can see, oops, there you are. This is made out of cork. This is the fabric. Mm, I like that. And I really like the cork like there. The cork. So you have a choice, but I prefer the cork. So um, anyway, so that's kind of all that's here. 
Um, can everybody give me a hands, maybe a thumbs up or, or just kind of say, has everybody printed out their instructions? And then Doris has a question. And Doris, that. do you back the border? Absolutely. I back it. But you will be using, you will be doing the same technique on all the squares and including the, um, the borders. I do a little bit different, but you will actually be, um, I'm going to turn it back to me so you can hear me. Okay, so I, um, I haven't done a thing yet. So I'm not going to go over. I think next week I will go over. Uh, there are some changes that I want to go over with you on each of the different um, um, fabrics. The one other thing that I want to talk about real quick is I like to quilt mine. And I'm going to show you this. i got to go back again, back and forth. Okay. Um, this is the first block that we'll be doing. And um, so this one, I actually quilt ahead of time. So I put poly mesh stabilizer in my um, hoop. And then I go through and do the quilting process. And then I do the block. Now, if you're going to do the quilting process, Salima has the link um, for the Kimberbell um, quilting. And I think it is absolute, and I don't know if you can see it in the background, it's candy canes and peppermint, and it's just adorable. And I like to quilt ahead of time. It just makes the fabric. And so what it is, is you use the poly mesh, and then I use fusible fleece with the fusible fleece up, and then um, it will do a tack down for your a placement line. It will do a tack down for your fusible fleece. It will do a placement line for your fabric and then you'll do a tack down on the fabric and then you'll do your quilting. And then I bring in the design um, that I'm doing. Um, this one is a little different and I want to kind of give you a, a heads up about it. You are going to need a um, bobbin made of water soluble thread and I love my water soluble thread it's called varnish extra oh it's right here okay Salima carries it it's from superior threads varnish extra and I use this on all of my placement and tack down stitches okay so when you are doing the wreath on this first block that we're going to do next week, you will do put water soluble thread in the bobbin. Okay? Water soluble in the bobbin for a couple of the different steps. So I put water soluble thread in a bobbin and then I used a black um, Sharpie and put a dot on that bobbin so that um, you can make absolutely positively sure that you're not going to use that to sew. I remember talking to Bob Superior at one of the quilt shops and he told us a funny story about water soluble thread. He had a son that was turning 21 and he made all of his friends um, uh, swim trunks <laughs> and um, they had a party at his house and it was just boys and he made them all with this um, Vanish Extra. And you can imagine what happened in the pool for his <laughs> oh, no. 21st birthday. I love that story. I think it is so funny. And so I always want to make sure that I don't do my sewing with the um, Vanish Extra. So that's why I marked the bobbin with black. And so that I make sure that that one has the water soluble. And then I usually empty it. Uh, and set it aside um, because it needs to be in when you use this if you have a lot of breakage on this and some people complain that they do um, they will you should put it in a baggie and also the bobbin in the baggie as well so if you do that and you keep them together then um, then you will not use it to do the sewing and make something that could cause you um, embarrassing moments afterwards. 
<laughs> so anyway, so that's the Vanish Extra. I absolutely love it. It is, um, it works really well. And um, when you sew this, there are two steps, and I don't know, I'm gonna change back to my book quickly here. You can see on the street lamp one, I've crossed out two steps, and that is because I've done the quilting ahead of time. So when you use the quilting ahead of time, you, you're gonna do five steps. Placement for the um, fleece, tack down for the fleece, you're gonna cut the fleece, you're gonna um, do the placement for the fabric, do a tack down for the fabric, and then um, you're gonna take that water soluble out put regular thread in. I used a white on mine. I thought I, I might be pretty with a silver sparkle as well. Maybe um, the uh, King Star silver would be pretty on this. And um, to use that instead, I may do that on a second one just to see what it looks like. But um, then there's some extra steps in there to make this fun um, so that it, it's fringing. And I'll tell you my tips and tricks on that because I did have a um, an issue, and I went back and changed my tip and and or my trick, and it worked out fine. So um, also in here, for those of you that want to go ahead, they did make a mistake, I think. And when you stitch out the candy cane placement line, I continue. Um, it says red thread they didn't put a tack down it says that the instructions are correct but the file is wrong and there is not a tack down for the um, red glitter so that's why i want to do that with you and um what sue what do you mean you don't need to i think she's replying to doris oh okay that's what it looks like here. okay um, anyway, when you when you do the candy cane, I found they they forgot a step in the embroidery part, but it's in the instructions. And I looked at every single one of them, so I want to go through all of that with you when we do this next week. So what we'll do is I will stitch out this one um, next week, and then your homework will be for you to do the second one in the there. So we'll kind of do it so that you can watch me do one because it's kind of boring to watch somebody sew all of them, but we can do this one together. And, um, and then what you can see I do is I literally take it and I put it in the empty folder. So now that I cut those um, pieces out, I wanted to show you that before, all I do is I kind of gently fold and I know that this one is going to be the six and a half by 10 and a half. The next one, the cocoa stand, okay. And I'm gonna put a large one in there. Now, I haven't put the backing on here yet, so it's okay to fold it because I, when I put the backing on um, the fusible woven, it'll flatten right out nicely. So now I'm gonna do the red house as I go through. And I'm going to put this behind here. So as you can see, everything is in its place. It's very easy. It's easy to get to. And if you have just a few minutes, then um, or a certain amount of minutes. And what I've done is on each one of them, like the house, I think it takes 45 minutes. The Christmas tree takes 29 minutes. So each one, um, takes a certain amount of time and I and that is with the quilting on it and when you buy the quilting you're going to get two different um, files one is for the inner border and the outer border and the other one is for the blocks itself there aren't different ones that's the same quilting on all the blocks so um, so I'm going to put this one in here so as you can see, I'm just staying so organized that I've got everything where it belongs. And um, once I put the backing on, that's when I can put it in. And it's really nice, these page protectors are exactly the size that you need, eight and a half by 10 and a half. So it really works out well for that. 
Okay. And I like the fact that after this project, you can reuse everything. You can reuse it. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to do a second one, or if I'm done with the project, I take my little labels off yeah. and I just redo it. So when we're ready for the next one, um, it's done and ready to go. So this one, I think, nope, I need the street lamp. So the street lamps are the ones that are the six and a half by ten and a half. And um, the houses and the tree are all the eight and a half by ten and a half. Um, I, I have started to, yes, Joanne, it just works out really nice, or I repurpose it. This one used to be my boulevard, um, and I made three of them, but I'm done. So now I change this to my candy, um, candy lane quilt. Um, I've done the, uh, candy corn quilt, and I, um, I used it again so that I have to, I, I use it over and over again until I'm done with, I'm not going to make any more. I have a daughter that I tend to say I'm not going to make her one and then by the end of it I've had so much fun making it, I usually end up making her one as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> lucky she's a lucky daughter. <laughs> lucky. But it, it is a lot of prep work, you're right Doris, but to be organized, it it's off. so easy just to grab it and say, oh, you know, I feel like I can do a block right now. And I'm done. I can because it's all finished and ready to go. And then it all stays nice and neat. The other thing that I do, and I don't know, again, I've got to change my camera. I go back and forth. Um, I use a USB stick. I put everything on the stick. And then I put the stick in my folder with the, the tie on it. That way I always know where it is. It's either in my machine or when I'm done. This folder is always where I am. So I put the USB stick there. Um, and you're right. Organization, I think, is the is is a key to success. You, you know otherwise, Lini. Otherwise, it looks really overwhelming. You don't know exactly. where to start. Yeah. When you're organized like this, you know exactly which yeah. block you're working on. All the fabric and it just, is there, and it's just, it's just done. Yeah. So it's so much easier to it. do that. I love and it. you don't have to put the f um, fusible woven or the shape flex on the back. Um, Sleem and I had a talk the other day about it as while the one is embroidering and you're looking at, you know, 12 minutes of sewing, then I will go and put the fusible woven on my next block so that I've got it ready to go. And again, I keep all the little pieces because there are so many little pieces. And then in my box, let's go to my candy cane lane box here, I'm going to go again back to my Organization reduces anxiety. anxiety. <laughs> That's our slogan. <laughs> it is. I will put all of my spare pieces in my um, in my box because I kid you not, they have come in handy many, many, many times where something didn't go right or whatever. And then when I'm done with the full project, then I have a Kimberbell box that I literally go to. And if I need to, to, to make, like I was telling you, I, you know, I wanna make a shirt, I can go and take those extra pieces and use them on another project. So, and I think, uh, Doris, I think they're slowly going to the USB sticks. Um, I, I think that that's a way of the world right now. I still, I, you can buy a, um, a drive for like $10 on that, a store Amazon <laughs> if you need to to attach but um, I think I've seen a lot of the USB sticks a lot of their new stuff has come out with USB sticks on it their events are all on their, USB yeah, sticks yeah their events are USB mm -hmm. sticks now so Hopefully. so I hope this helps lots of homework to get all your stuff ready so can you just uh, recap the homework please oh so the homework is to have your book ready and um, all your little things uh, uh, organized, and then all your fabric, fabric. cut, okay? okay? And um, once it's all cut, next week, and then if you want to, you can iron on your fusible uh, woven and your, um, or your shape flex on the back of all pieces of fabric, every one that you're going to use. I have found that the, that cuts down on the puckering. They do a lot of satin stitches and things like that, and so it just it's very helpful to do that. 
So, um, so homework is that, just have it all cut, your notebooks are ready to go. And our first project will be the street lamp one. And then, um, and I'll show you all my little hints and tips and tricks with that. You will need your water soluble thread You'll need a bobbin with some water soluble in it. I filled mine half full because you will be using it for two different, um, the two different street lamp blocks and make sure that it's marked with a black dot so that you know that that is um, the water soluble and then your container with all your goodies of, of all your threads ready to go. Um, I use, you can cut the SVG files. I choose on Kimberbell not to. They're, they're really good, the, the SVG does work well, but there have been a couple of times when you put um, foam over something or extra something that they are just a little tad short. I'd much rather cut them with these because there aren't that many cuts on each block. So that's my kind of um, feeling on that part. So you can cut them out if you want to. I just have found with the extra stabilizer that I tend to use on it and stuff, they are cut a little shy. You can always add to it, but then you're kind of still cutting in the end with that. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, you did great. Okay, so I think we'll see you next Saturday, same place, same time, yeah. and we will sew our first block. Yay, that'll be okay. fun. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Any questions I should ask before we yes, leave real yes. quick? Any questions? Any questions? You covered everything okay. so thoroughly. They have no questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <goodness. Aww>. <laughs> Hi, Mary. <laughs> That's right. You can watch us on replay, too. Right, right. <laughs> it's That's always right. there. Actually, on AAA Sewing and Fabric YouTube. And then you can find us, or you can do it on that. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. All righty, we'll see you next week.